Travis Wingett so. so I've been uh, trying to help you Mormons to uh, leave the church by identifying criminal behavior by the church <clears throat> to uh, use that as your way out of the Mormon closet and I've been trying to argue with ex-Mormons that uh, ex-Mormons should focus on uh, the crimes of the current church and not the debate over whether uh, the church is a fraud because Joseph Smith looked in a hat with rocks. It just plays into the church's narrative when you attack the church through the mythology, which I've identified as code, rather than focusing on the crimes of the current church. Because that's what they want. They want to distract away from the crimes they're committing by having you confused over whether or not Joseph Smith looked into a hat with rocks, whether he saw God and Heavenly Father in reality, or whether Moroni actually appeared to him and he had possession of, of gold or golden plates, and whether he translated or whether it was the gift and power of God. You know, all those distractions, all those arguments that don't go anywhere because we're not there, we didn't see it, you're not listening to my videos on how it's a code. <laughs> and, so, and so, yeah, it, it protects the church, allows the church to keep on going if, as ex-Mormons and critics of the church, who are not Mormon, who've heard about the church and go, man, this is lame, <laughs> rocks in a hat, angels. That's not how you you criticize the church. Go after them for their crimes. Even in the Book of Mormon, as both sides know, talks about how you punish people for their crimes, not for their beliefs. And uh, if the church can get you arguing over beliefs, yeah, they get to commit crimes. So I'm going to go over a list of crimes that I'm aware of and we're gonna start with one that I didn't have written down on the paper this is another woman who uh, had been in the church and who found out because she herself was subjected to it the church has property for girls camps and every summer uh, they supposedly uh, they canceled it last year for coronavirus, but this year they're planning on resuming girls camps again. There's a problem here in Utah with the girls camps, and that has to do with the water supply. The church has made it so that they can bypass water regulations and are thus poisoning the girls at girls camps. So there's one. Uh, and this was a, from another woman who's done her own independent research on the matter. Uh, she's posted it online. This is where I got it from. Wanted to get that out there so that you guys know about it. <coughs> the church used to be involved with an adoption agency. It was like LDS... Uh, adop I can't remember the title of the the corporate or the business entity which as the church has revealed through the whistleblower uh, they invest from all of their sources of income and invest it into uh, financial uh, or LLC corporations to invest that money either to gain interest on the money or to invest into the stock market to obtain uh, 
a higher return on their investment that way. And so the church was involved with adoptions. Uh, you may have heard about the scandal uh, right before coronavirus of uh, Brother Peterson from Arizona, Mormon. He served a mission in the Marshall Islands and when he returned the church uh, put a stop to their adoption agency and so he thought it would be an excellent idea to rescue the women who were raped out in the Marshall Islands bring them to America and in Arizona and even here in Utah as one of the places was right here in West Valley City uh, he would have homes for the mother the single mothers who were raped with babies from the rape uh, stay in these homes and it was deplorable conditions in and of itself but the real problem is that he was having them give up their babies to his adoption agency contacts. And remember, the church was involved with adoptions first. And with the church gone, he stepped in to fill the void. Now, how did the church do it? Well, the church is conservative. You know, the inverted pentagram elephant conservative. Hey, you guys have an inverted pentagram too? Wow, let's join forces. And so, in the conservative party of white supremacism, they hate women. And so women are attacked and abused, victimized criminalized and so sex trafficking and uh, uh, sex slavery and uh, prostitution and uh, all of that is involved uh, worldwide but the church if you're unfamiliar they used to practice this thing called polygamy And the manner in which it worked is that they took women from the United States and trafficked them into Mexico, Mexico territory. And Mormons celebrate this human sex trafficking on the, what is it, 24th of July for the days of 47, 1847. Yeah, that's their celebration of, of uh, human sex trafficking. Because they had them sealed in polygamous relationships with Brigham and Heber and some of the others, and then transported them out of the United States into Mexico territory. Uh, if you don't transport them state to state and country to country, uh, it's it's just sexual abuse but trafficking is involving transporting out of state or out of country so remember that's what the church is guilty of and uh, they try to blame it on Joseph I've done the videos where Joseph is innocent had nothing to do with it Heber C. Kimball was a polygamist before even joining and then had a third added to him by someone other than Joseph because Joseph was on the run uh, and so though the United States came in and shut the whole uh, sex uh, trafficking down shut down the brothels by the church there's another one they had uh, prostitution uh, in the state of Utah. Uh, Orrin Porter Rockwell got the first one. 
for his loyalty to Brigham at the point of the mountain here in Utah. And then there's the infamous uh, Commerce Avenue, Regent Street, uh, downtown, where Brigham Young, despite his extra wives, needed lots of comfort when those wives were divorcing him. And so yeah, he frequented the brothel downtown as well. Uh, not to mention the temple involving uh, the women being naked uh, for the temple ritual in the garden scene. But the women had a larger speaking role. <laughs> and so, since the United States shut down those operations, they eventually got themselves involved with uh, uh, adoption clinics. Because the church doesn't want women to have abortions even if they were raped. Remember, white supremacy. They're against all forms of abortion, regardless of how it happened. And it's usually the white supremacists who are the cause of the need for an abortion. Having raped babies. And so, since the church also teaches abstinence only for sex education, this religious guilt thrown as a cherry on top that's not allowed to pop. <laughs> oh, that's code, guys, just in case you were wondering. <laughs> uh, it causes confusion as to how do we behave and when our natural bodies are gushing as I'm hearing on a commercial now the gush and uh, when guys wet dreams which don't always happen at night uh, there's lots of confusion and white supremacy they abuse the guys that they can't have the wet dreams they've got to actually have a woman even if they have to rape the woman to show that they're men and uh, and so we had that scandal where Utah was refusing to process any of the rape kits they finally got to them but the statute of limitations apparently doesn't well, applies to rapes as physical sexual assaults aren't considered beyond the statute of limitations. And so, yeah, we've had numerous women in the church, girls, who get raped as little girls. And, uh, uh, they of course get pregnant because the church doesn't want contraception evil because it means you're having sex you're not supposed to be having sex you're Mormon and, and you're supposed to abstain and it happens because of the abuse and the white supremacy teachings to scientifically deny our natural bodies and how they function and so the church profited off of this causing the problem they then had the solution hey girls you're now wicked slut whores come to our uh, adoption agency and we'll tell you not to have an abortion because that's a sin after already having committed sin and we'll put your baby up for adoption because you're too young and we're gonna get your parents to help us out with this to take away your baby that you were raped with and uh, we'll put it up in a good Mormon household with a man and a woman because we're no longer practicing polygamy right 
uh, who will take better care of them than you will because you're going to be financially struggling. You're going to have to be under the care of your parents until you turn 18 and then you're going to have to get a job and you don't have no husband because he got a scholarship to play at football at BYU or is go has a fast track into an apostleship in the church or blah 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 whatever other excuse uh, because we can't have you get married as <laughs> being young that's unthinkable uh, screw love and so yeah the church also makes it difficult financially and so the woman then is forced to have her baby and then give it up for adoption and uh, ruin the girl's life is already ruined and here the church is profiting off of it through their adoption agency they got out of it and well you know Peterson stepped in and so uh, we also have the Boy Scouts can't leave out the boys gotta rape them too don't we Mormons so yeah remember the Boy Scouts they're still in the process of struggling as to the liquidation that's likely to happen of the Boy Scouts agency because the church were the biggest financial supporters of the Boy Scouts and uh, the uh, church abandoned the Boy Scouts they supplied them with the most number of boys as well as scoutmasters and those scoutmasters turned out to be pedophile rapists and uh, many Mormon boys were affected by this and the church just up and said oh we're leaving the Boy Scouts all the legal ramifications are on you except for Arizona good for you guys fight the power and uh, they've got a lawsuit against the church for the Boy Scouts in their state who were involved in the rapes and uh, so here's some other stuff that you guys are not aware of I used to work for the church I worked at uh, their distribution center warehouse at 17th and 17th it's got the store there they've expanded the warehouse uh, because they brought over the garments and the robes from beehive clothing and I'm the one that made that possible for them to easily do the transfer they couldn't figure out how to do it until I did I got transferred over to beehive clothing and uh, redesigned their warehouse to allow for uh, that possibility <coughs> but while I was there uh, we saw that uh, we were getting shipments from the Philippines of already made garments and they were in a different type of box didn't care much for their type of boxes <laughs> uh, the ones that we were using were better um, but uh, nonetheless uh, we had to put them onto the racks for storage and add them to our inventory here in the states and uh, I guess it's the president of Beehive I can't remember his title whether it's director or president regardless he had a big meeting for all of the employees where he, he it was it was basically here's my pictures of my vacation to the Philippines <laughs> to uh, look at the the uh, garment centers uh, that made those garments from the Philippines and he openly admitted they were sweatshops because the air conditioning systems weren't working and apparently the church isn't able to pay 
to fix them. He thought it was funny. I mean, it's bad enough the way the church treats their female employees, mostly, dominantly, uh, in here in Beehive Clothing, uh, and the method of payment for them. But nonetheless, uh, it was already a sweatshop because they couldn't have air conditioning that worked. And then he made it worse by saying that uh, along with women who are working in those sweatshops, children also were employed by the church in the Philippines to help make the garments. Children. And he justified it by claiming that the Philippines are corrupt and the economy is so poor that it's necessary for children to work in order to support the family. And so, you know, hey, that's just the way it is. We're helping the families by putting the children to work. That's how white supremacists think to justify slavery. To justify human trafficking. To justify child slave labor. Is that they claim that they're helping. And thus we need to. The Mormon bishop down in uh, southern Utah who was caught for uh, uh, pimping out the uh, having sex with the girls uh, down there who was also a part of the police force I believe uh, this was a, again a couple years back uh, he claimed that he was helping the girls So again, you can see the sexual depravity of Mormons because of the teachings of the church and the former practices of the church. The FLDS church and all their branches, the All Reds, not just with Warren Jeffs, they broke off from the church when uh, the United States came down and shut the church down. And so they believe that Wilfred Woodruff was a fallen prophet, and that's why these branch off Mormonisms are militarized, is because they were ready to fight to keep polygamy, fight the United States. And uh, Wilfred Woodruff passed on it. Okay, something's okay. All right, there's, I muted the news here, but apparently there's breaking news in the 8 to 9 o'clock hour. It's now 10 o'clock here. Uh, there's five officers shot. Is that what I saw happen? So, uh, and so yeah, the church has child slavery and and uh, sweatshops out in the Philippines at least if not in other places now remember the church is doing business with Russia with the UAE and other countries where temples are being announced where there's not enough members to justify it and being recognized by these other governments uh, how do you think they're doing things if they're doing this in the Philippines. Yeah, the church isn't just being welcomed in. There's a business deal going on. And so there's other criminal activity in all these states where the church is announcing a temple. And I've done the exposure of the UAE temple uh, the other day that 
was announced back in last April's conference along with uh, uh, the other temple scandal in Shanghai because again there's another crime for you Nelson knew of the seriousness of coronavirus called up China to find out how serious it was and then supposedly they as the biggest manufacturer of PPE wanted PPE as Nelson tells us oh we're donating all this PPE to China but all the United States states ordered their PPE from China then Jared took it all away forcing them to find other sources for it but what's the church doing giving PPE to a nation that doesn't need the PPE because they already have the slave labor to make it <laughs> and so uh, yeah the church gets a Mormon who's involved with a company that has PPE as his business and they give it to China well come to find out that the reason why is because we get a, a Shanghai temple as a result and he cries on the pulpit oh this is great but uh, who paid for it <laughs> Utah tax money Mormons paid for it this is the type of deal you gotta be careful of when Nelson gets up and announces a temple because you know there's a shady business deal behind the scenes in order to get it. Where's the Russian temple, for example? Oh, but what shady deal has the church done for that temple? Well, he took away the high priesthood group, the high priest group, and uh, took away Bears Ears National Monument, but the Washington Post exposed that Herbert was going to sell it to a Uranium One mining company. <laughs> if you remember that scandal. And that's the thing you also have to watch out for. Is this QAnon back, Russian backed conspiracy, which is just lies, not conspiracies. They're actually telling the truth, but of a different organization. And it's the church for QAnon. Space aliens, if you can hide a kolob. Satanic, inverted pentagram. Pedophiles, Boy Scouts. And so, it, these are diversionary tactics. And the voting machine lawyer. Dominion, they're using analytical programs to rig the vote. Well, analytical programs rigged the election in 2016. And uh, Facebook, etc., Cambridge Analytica, and uh, so yeah, you got to be paying attention because there is truth. You just have to turn the truth to the correct source, and the liberal media are clueless on this. <laughs> but being Mormon, I went. Wait a minute. Space alien, pedophile, Satanist. Russian backed? Yeah. And so uh, uh, Russia was involved with that to remind the church hey, you need to be loyal to us, otherwise, we're going to expose you. That's how they work. And, uh, uh, and so, yeah, they were supposed to give the uranium to Russia through that process but the Washington Post stopped it and exposed it and uh, they backed down um, but uh, other things you know like coronavirus Russia purposely the church isn't shutting down why isn't the church shutting down why is the church involved with the insurrection against America these are other crimes by the church so 
And then we have the the ones that have been going on since Lorenzo Snow. <laughs> the windows of heaven. If you remember that Mormon video. Lorenzo Snow goes down to have a conference down there in southern Utah. And in the middle of the conference, he stops. And the whole audience is going, oh, he's getting revelation. <gasps> wow. And then he says, I just received revelation. All of you guys need to pay the church to get us out of debt. <laughs> and this will be a perpetual thing in the church called protection racket. <laughs> and so, yeah, tithing became a protection racket. If you've read Malachi, which the church uses at the same time, to redefine what Malachi is telling us. Malachi says, bring all your tithes, not the other offerings that he talks about, the tithes specifically. Bring all your tithes into the storehouse and I will open up on the windows of heaven. What's a storehouse? <laughs> Is it the church administrative function or is it the welfare system yeah the welfare system the bishop storehouses but that tithing money doesn't go to the bishop storehouses they created a whole nother separate donation from which they take 10 percent and invest it to handle the, fa the tithing, the fast offerings, or what that's for. And so tithing, they claim, is for building buildings, churches, temples, and publications of Book of Mormons. That's what tithing goes for now. Not for the poor, goes for the church. See how they twisted Malachi around? <coughs> and of course, the hundred billion scandal with a forty billion portfolio in the stock market and seven billion annually in interest which is more every year because of the amount of interest percentage which means as according to the the whistleblower the church no longer needs tithing they make more in the interest than they do from the yearly income of tithing now that they take out of. So, isn't that great? Another crime. Because a protection racket is where a group or an individual promises protection of some kind if you pay them. That's it. That's a protection racket. So your insurance company, your union, yeah, the mafia, when they got busted, finally, by the United States, they went into the insurance and union businesses. And so, yes, your police unions are the ones who were taught by the unions to beat on the Black Lives Matter protesters. White supremacy. And so, yes, the church is a criminal structured organization. They've got count two counselors instead of one. They have the underboss, who's the, the president of the Quorum of the Twelve. The lieutenants are the rest of the Twelve. And then you have the soldiers, who are the Melchizedek priesthood holders. The associates are anybody who's not a soldier, uh, who uh, helps the church, such as Judge Tina Campbell, as we've now all found out. She's now an associate for the church rather than a soldier, like the rest of the justices in the federal Utah court are. So that's the protection racket. Paying the tithing. And you all know what it's referred to, whether you're Mormon or ex-Mormon, 
fire insurance. Then we have pyramid schemes. I'm already past 35 minutes here. This is how corrupt the church is, guys. And I'm sure I'm missing some, or I covered it in a generalized statement. <laughs> pyramid scheme. Do you know what those are? Oh, that's where a guy at the top takes money from people below. Not quite. It's a recruitment source of income to the top guy. The CEO of a company <coughs> recruits other people to recruit other people to recruit other people to recruit other people. Everybody figured it out yet? Missionary work! Yay! Because each of the recruits, in order to recruit other people, have to buy a kit because they have product that if people want to buy, they can. It's prices are jacked up real high. And that's where you get your Avon and your USANA and your doTERRA. Terra is even bad because the oils actually cause problems. But uh, the main source of income, if they involve a recruitment process, can't do it. It's illegal in any form or process, even if you have product to sell. I shut down one such business here in Utah. <laughs> through the Better Business Bureau, by the way. I filed a complaint with the Better Business Bureau and uh, the guy kept insisting, I'm selling product. I can do that legally. Well, no, you can't. <laughs> you cannot have a source of income coming through recruitment. That's illegal. And the church does it with missionary work because who pays for your missions? You do! And if you can't afford your mission, and your parents can't pay for your mission, well, the bishop now takes donations from other members to pay for your mission. Church never pays. <laughs> they never pay for anything. Not even when the truckload to Honduras, the church never paid for any of that. It came from Mormon donations or other donations that were also laundered into the stock market. Like Russia gave the church $32 billion through all those LLC corporations that they newly formed right before Nelson came out and said, hey, we're doing business with Russia. We're going to have a temple in Russia. Now, where is that temple? Where are the Mormons in Russia? That whole line is blank. <laughs> Wait a minute. You just assigned new mission presidents to Russia? We're not allowed to have missionaries in Russia. Why do you have mission presidents for Russia? <laughs> What's going on? And so, yes. And what do we do as missionaries? We convert. <laughs> oh, no, we don't do the conversion. <laughs> yes, we recruit. And what do those people do when they join the church? Well, we've got a protection racket for you. you got to to do that. you That's part of your covenant of baptism. And your temple endowment membership is uh, you have to go through the bishop's interview and stake president interview to get a temple recommend. That's number 10 on the questions. Do you pay a full tithe? So, this is the church's crimes. So, those of you who are Mormon, if any of those uh, are upsetting to you, good for you. Welcome. Now the question is, will you leave the church finally? Or will you remain complicit in the crimes? 
The people who put thumbs downs on my videos, especially this one, pay attention to this one. Because they're not listening anymore. <laughs> they're complicit with the church's corruption and crimes. I'm not concerned about whether Joseph Smith looked into a hat or not. I already know the answer. I did my own church history research, and I've been providing you the real LDS church history. And I, I finally figured out how to customize my homepage so that you can have the church history uh, playlists to look at. I had 666 videos <laughs> for the main church history one <laughs> the other day when I put it up, but uh, yeah, that was funny. <laughs> <laughs> and so for those of you who are ex-Mormons or critics to the church use this as your weapon against the church expose the church for their crimes not accused crimes of Joseph Smith oh he raped a 14 year old girl no he didn't Try focusing on the current church and go back to Brigham Young. He's got a lot of stuff. Because he is the one who started the inverted pentagram. That's how we know them. Helaman 6. So, have fun. And, uh,. We ex-Mormons look forward to having new recruits, <laughs> free of cost, of course, of the, the remaining Mormons.